Hello, I'm Tom Lusher and uh, this is Inside Cardiology. So after the summer break, we'll talk about the hole in the heart. It's called patent foramen ovale. It sounds bad, but it's actually vital as we grow into a real human in the uterus of our mother's uh, body. And it is actually vital that blood can pass from the left to the right atrium and eventually into the org growing organism. And after birth, it should close normally, but it doesn't close in everybody. And this can be a problem. Although it doesn't affect the performance of the heart, it can be uh, a uh, source of emboli. Emboli that evolve in the legs due to venous thrombosis and then for some reason passes uh, this hole and it eventually embolizes into our organism, into the arterial circulation. Now, if it goes into the spleen or the liver, that doesn't really matter. But if, go, if it goes into, into the brain, it's bad. It causes a stroke. And here on this slide, you see all forms of strokes. And uh, the one we will talk about is just one that uh, is, is a, a, the underlying cause in about one out of five to six patients presenting with a TIA or a stroke, and that's the embolic stroke. Now on the next slide, we see all kinds of different uh, sources of a thrombus uh, causing an embolic stroke. First of all, the patent foramen ovale, but also if you have atrial fibrillation, it, it may uh, arise from the left atrial appendix. If you had an infarction and didn't undergo primary PCI in time, you may have a thrombus at the site of the infarction that may embolize in some cases. Then if uh, an aortic uh, valve is altered, causing uh, calcific aortic stenosis, calcium or thrombi may embolize into the brain. Then of course in the aorta, we may have plaques that rupture and eventually the same may be the case in the carotid artery. Now let's focus really first now and exclusively in this emission on the PFO. Now, if a thrombus passes, it may obstruct any uh, artery in the brain if we're unlucky and it happens to go there. And that, for instance, if you have a middle uh, cerebral artery occlusion, you may have an hemiplegia, which is a severe uh, medical condition, as we all know. Now, this is an example of a patient that had two uh, thrombi. You can see on the left uh, in the right atrium, a thrombus that uh, sneaks through the patent foramen ovale. And in addition, particularly on the right uh, side, you see uh, something coming out of the left atrial appendix. So this is really a high risk patient for an embolic stroke. Now, uh, this is an example uh, that you see where a, a thrombus really passes through this patent for ovale, a huge one that would cause a, a really bad stroke that may be fatal in nature eventually. Now, how often do we see this? This is uh, the angiographic demonstration of such a patent for ovale. And on the right hand side, you see that in strokes, in cryptogenic strokes, that these are strokes that we're not sure what they are, are uh, coming from. And this is often an embolic stroke this is much more common to have an open patent for foramen ovale than in those with other forms of strokes. So clearly there is an association between PFO and embolic stroke. That was quite clear for some time. But what was controversial is whether to close this uh, uh, patent foramen ovale would do any good in a patient <clears throat> that had a, a stroke. And here you see uh, that we just implanted an AMPLATS device to close this hole. And on the right hand side, you see the schematic representation of it. So does this really help or are we just doing something that has no clinical value? Now this was a long, uh, for a long time a question, but now we have three big trials uh, encompassing all of around 2000 patients the uh, GORE reduce, the CLOSE trial, and the RESPECT trial. And they all compared a PFO closure with either antiplatelet therapies or medical therapy in the case of RESPECT where anticoagulation, aspirin, clopidogrel, or a combination was allowed. And you can see that in all instances, the intervention was markedly superior 
to medical therapy or antithrombotic therapy. And indeed, the difference is huge. This is not what we are seeing currently with any other trial in heart failure, hypertension, interventional cardiology and other fields uh, of the, the, the uh, discipline. So this is really very impressive. And here you see the hazard ratios are amazing. You can see that it's uh, 0, uh, 0, 03, 0, 033 and 0, 038. That means that at least 60% relative risk reduction in some even more. So this is very, very convincing. So should everybody close uh, this uh, PFO if you find one? Well, the answer is it's more complicated. Any procedure has complications. Complications such as embolization of the device, it sticks somewhere in the uh, 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 superior vena cava or it embolizes through the left heart into the aorta or even sticks here in the brachycephalic trunk. Uh, there is bleeding at the puncture site as always uh, when we do something like that. It can cause atrial fibrillation and you can see that atrial fibrillation occurs in 1 in 20 of these patients and this is of course really very uh, uh, lower incidence with medical therapy. Uh, then also there, is, uh, there can be mild valvular regurgitations as we published this in a paper with my uh, collaborator Nazim Krasniki. Uh, and um, in, uh, lastly, you can also have thrombosis formation on the device that then eventually requires anticoagulation, which is not what you want to achieve with the device. So we can conclude that the catheter-based PFO closure is superior to medical therapy with markedly less stroke and bleeding, but some complications that are technical in nature and need related to the implementation of a foreign body. So that means we should only use it when you already had a stroke in secondary prevention. In primary prevention, the risk of uh, untoward events is too high uh, for the benefit that we can expect. So remember PFO, a hole in the heart, is something to watch for as a cardiologist, even for any doctor that uh, in, uh, encounters a patient with a TIA and a stroke. And look for it. If you find it, close it because it's working. Thank you very much for your attention.